Hi, this is Shekhar Srinivasan, a Microsoft Certified Trainer and a Pluralsight Author. In this video, I will discuss about one of the new feature introduced in Xamarin Forms 4 that is Collection Views. Friends, if you haven't subscribed my channel, then please subscribe my channel and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever I create a new video. This encourages me to create more and more videos. Now, first let us understand what is a collection view. In simple terms, a collection view is used for displaying a list of data using different layout specifications. The main aim of collection view is to provide more flexibility while displaying the list of data in multiple columns in vertical or horizontal grid and also to provide better performance when compared with the list view. One important point we need to remember here is that collection view has been introduced from Xamarin Forms 4. But still it is currently in an experimental state. So it is mandatory for us to specify collection view experimental by setting the forms flag using the statement forms.setFlags of collection view underscore experimental. This statement should be written within the main activity.cs file for Android, app.delegate.cs for iOS and app.xaml.cs for UWP before calling the forms.init method. One more important point we need to remember about the collection view is currently it is supported on iOS and Android but it is only partially supported on the UWP platform. Before we start working with the collection view let us first understand the differences between the collection view and list view. Even though most of the time while working with collection view, we find many similarities with the list view, but however, we have quite a lot of differences also. And this is very important for us to understand before we start working with the collection views. The first difference we can observe is that collection view has a very flexible layout model which allows the user data to be displayed vertically or horizontally in a list or multi-column grid structure. The next important difference we can find is that collection view allows the user to select a single item or multiple items. Whenever we use to display the data within the list view, we usually take the support of text cell, image cell or view cell. But whenever we work with the collection view, we don't have a concept of cells itself. And hence, we can directly define the appearance for each item of data in the list within the data template itself. While working with the list view, we need to use caching strategy for improvising the performance. But whereas collection view automatically utilizes the virtualization provided by the underlying native controls. One important point we need to understand while working with the collection view that is many properties and events from the list view are not supported by the collection view. For example, is pull to refresh enabled? context actions etc are currently not supported by the collection view. Collection view does not support built-in separators. Now let us understand some of the important properties we need to know while working with the collection view. Item source. It is used to specify the collection of items to be displayed and the default value for the item source is null. Item template. It is used to specify the template to be applied for displaying each item present within the collection of items to be displayed. Items layout. It is used to specify the orientation of the list items layout. That is the items to be displayed as a vertical list or horizontal list. Header. It is used to add the header block for the collection view. 
footer it is used to add the footer block for the collection view next one of the most important property we need to remember that is item sizing strategy the value for this property is an enumeration and the default value for this property is measure all items which means that each item is individually measured and sized while displaying the item at the data template and the other option we have is measure first item if we set this as the value for item sizing strategy then only the first item is measured and all the other subsequent items will be given the same size as that of the first item one important point we need to remember here is that we don't have any property like has uneven rows equal to true for setting the item size for the rows in collection view now let us understand how to use the collection view practically I have just created the Xamarin Forms blank application and I have taken the liberty to create the folder structure and the images which are required for our application. So what I did is just created the folders with the name model, service, view and view model. And also I have copied the images at the drawable location of Android and also I have copied the images to the resource folder of iOS projects. The first thing you need to do to start working with the collection view is to verify the version of the Xamarin forms. So make sure the version is above 4. Now the next thing we need to consider here is that since collection view feature is still in experimental state, we need to set the forms flag. So let us do that. So let me open the main activity.cs and above the init statement we need to type in forms.set flags of collection view underscore experimental. And let me do the same for the iOS also. So let us open the app delegate.cs file and let me type in forms.set flags of collection view underscore experimental. That's it. We are all set to go for using collection view within our application. So let us start creating our model first. So let me right click on the model folder and let me select the class template and let us provide the name as product.cs. Now let us define the properties required for the product. So let me type in prop string product name, prop decimal price and then finally prop string image url once the model is prepared now let us create a service to provide the data so let me right click on the service folder and add a new file and let me provide the name for the class as product service now within this class i would like to provide a single method to return the list of the products so let me type in public list of product get products list i have quick fixed the required namespaces now this method has to return the list of products so let me type in return new list of product and let me use the magic of video and paste the code to add the list of products now you can observe i have added some list of products to the collection and the image URL is referencing the images that we have added to the drawable and resources folder of Android and iOS projects. Now let us create our view. So let me right click on the view folder and click on add new file. And let me select the content page XAML and provide the name as product view. Now let me first set the title for the content page. So let me type in title equal to since this page is a demo for the collection view let me type in demo on collection view now within the content page dot content let us start with our ui design i would like to use a grid so let me type in grid then grid dot row definitions and within that let me type in row definition 
and the height for this row i would like to take the complete so let me type in asterisk now let me type in collection view and we know that the source of data for this control can be provided using the item source so let me type in items source and i would like to data bind this so let me type in binding products next let us define the data template to be used for each item so let me type in collection view dot item template and then data template I already informed that unlike list view, we don't have text cell, image cell or view cell or any cell concept for collection view. We need to directly provide the layout. So let me type in grid, grid dot column definitions and I would like to have two columns. So let me type in column definition width equal to 100 for the first column. Then once again column definition and width equal to asterisk so that the second column occupies the entire available space. Now for the first column I would like to display the image. So let me type in image source equal to binding image URL and then width request equal to 90 and height request equal to 90 and grid dot column equal to 0. Then for the second column I would like to provide a stack layout. So let me type in stack layout orientation equal to vertical grid dot column equal to one and then let us add some labels to display the product name and the price. So let me type in label text equal to binding product name font size equal to title and to display the price let me type in label text equal to binding price. Let us format the value. So let me type in string format equal to price starts from 0, font size equal to subtitle. Now to execute this view, we require the view model to supply the product's details. So let us create the product view model. So let me right click on the view model and click on add new file. And let me provide the name as product view model. Now this product view model should return the list of products. So let me type in prop list of product products and I have quick fix the namespace errors. Now let me define a constructor and set the value for products. So let me type in sitor and then products equal to new product service. Let me quick fix the reference and then dot get product list. Now. Once we have defined the product view model, we need to specify the instance of this class as the binding context for our view. So let me type in XML namespace colon view model equal to CLR namespace colon CV demo dot view model. So let me type in binding context VM colon product view model. Now let us set this view as the main page for our application. So let me open the app.xaml.cs and let me first comment the main page. And now let me type in main page equal to new navigation page of new product view. Now let us execute the application. We can observe the data is displayed vertically like the list view control. Now let us try to display the list of items in horizontal way. So for that we need to set the items layout. So let me type in items layout equal to horizontal list. And since I wanted to display the data horizontally, let me set the height request for the definition as 120. Now once again let me execute the code. We can observe the list of items are displayed in horizontal mode. I have already informed that we can lay out the items in the collection view in flexible way. So now let us try to display two items in each row. So let us remove the items layout from the collection view. And now let me type in collection view dot items layout. And then we need to set the grid items layout. So let me type in grid items layout orientation I would like to have this as vertical and then I would like to display two items in each row so we need to set the span equal to 2 
and then I would like to provide the spacing for each item. So let me type in vertical item spacing equal to 6. And once again, let me set the height for the row definition as asterisk. Since while displaying the items in two columns, the above data template may not look proper. So let me update the UI for the data template. I have set the font size for the product name as subtitle. And for the price, I have removed the string format and I have set the font size as medium. Now let us save the code and execute. We can observe for each row two items are displayed. Now let me try to click on the items, but we can observe the items are not selectable. The reason is by default the selection mode for the collection view items are none. And remember that while explaining the properties I have mentioned about the item sizing strategy, which is used to set the row height for each item. Since the default value is measure all items, I haven't explicitly mentioned while defining the collection view. Now let us support the selection option for our collection view. So let us update our collection view. So let me type in selection mode equal to single. And also let me provide the name for the collection view. So let me type in x colon name equal to CV products. Now within the code behind for the view, let us attach the event handler. So let me type in CV products dot selection change plus equal to CV products underscore selection change. Now let us get the products selected by the user. So let me type in var products equal to e dot current selection. Remember that current selection will return a list of read only items which is supported from .NET 4.5. Now let us prepare the message to be displayed. So let me type in string message equal to string dot empty message equal to selected products slash n. Since the product is a I read only list, we need to iterate within the collection. So let me type in for int i equal to zero i less than products dot count i plus plus. Now let us extract the product. So let me type in var product equal to products of i as product. Let me quick fix the reference and let me type to prepare the message. So let me type in message plus equal to dollar product dot product name of product dot price. After the loop, let us display the message. So let me type in display alert of demo comma message comma ok. Now let me save the code and execute. Let me click on the item present within the collection view. We can observe the selected item details are displayed. Now let me check out how to handle if the selection mode is multiple. So let me update the selection mode as multiple. Now let me save the code and execute. We can observe the same code e dot current selection is used to get the item selected by the user. Since the previous code is to display a single item, I haven't mentioned the next line. So let us fix that so that each item will be displayed in a new row. So let me type in slash n. Now let us execute the code once again. Let me select the list of items. We can observe the multiple items what we have selected is getting displayed in new line. Hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed in creating this video. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe and click on the bell icon to get the notifications of my new video. This encourages me to create more and more videos. In the next video, I will discuss about how to use the collection view for loading the data in an incremental manner that is infinite scroll list. See you soon in the next video.